1603, a female temple dancer named Izumo no Okami began the tradition of kabuki, literally song dance drama, a Japanese traditional theatre originally intended for the plebeian section of society, with performances on the dry riverbed of the Kamagawa River in Kyoto. It has survived 400 years of ups and downs and is today recognised by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. 250 years later, in 1853, Commodore Perry's black ships, the Mississippi, Plymouth, Saratoga and the Susquehanna arrived in Uranga Harbour near Tokyo, triggering a series of momentous events that between 1853 and 1867 shook the very foundations of Japanese society, ending Sakoku, Japan's self-enforced isolation under the Tokugawa Bakufu and culminating in 1868 with the abdication of Tokugawa Yoshinobu, the 15th and last of the Tokugawa shoguns, heralding the Meiji Restoration. Whilst the arts of Japan had flourished in the interim, the transition to modernity, a period referred to as the Bakumutsu, was a time of enormous upheaval in Japan, a time of great anti-foreign sentiment which, with the Meiji Restoration, eventually heralded the end of the Japanese feudal era and its associated societal structure and the beginning of the industrial and political modernization of Japan. Into this milieu stepped the French-American Charles William Legendre, who would not only advise on and influence Japanese foreign policy at the time, but would also father a son who himself would, in time, become one of the leading lights of late Meiji, Taisho and early Showa era Kabuki theatre. A French citizen, in 1854, Legendre married Clara Victoria Malak in Brussels and moved to the United States, becoming a naturalised citizen. The young Legendre was in service as a deputy manager of a bank when, in 1861, with the outbreak of the American Civil War, he was commissioned as a major into the 51st Infantry Regiment, which he helped recruit, eventually becoming one of its regimental colonels. During the war, he served in the Union Army under General Ulysses S. Grant and was severely wounded during the Wilderness Campaign, losing his nose and an eye, and was honourably discharged in 1865 in New York with the rank of Brevet Brigadier General. In 1866, he left his adopted country to take up a post as American Consul to Amoy in China, with the view that he would later return to his adopted country. In 1872, on his way back to the United States, he stopped off in Japan, and took up a post as advisor to the Foreign Minister Soijima Taniomi, and later worked in a private capacity as an advisor to another Japanese politician, the Marquis Okuma Shigenobu. In July 1874, for his work for the Japanese government, he was awarded the Order of the Rising Sun Gold and Silver Star, the first non-Japanese ever to receive the award. Ten years before Legendre left his adopted homeland in the United States of America, the Japanese daimyo Matsudaro Yoshinaga, one of the four wise lords of the Bakumatsu during the last days of the Tokugawa shogunate, had an illegitimate daughter with his chambermaid in 1856. The daughter, Ito Ikeda as she became known, eventually asked permission to end it all by committing suicide. She was placed in the custody of one of Matsudaro's vassals and grew up in Tokyo. Though Legendre was already married to the daughter of a prominent New York lawyer, with whom he'd had a son named William, in 1872, while in Japan and staying at the mansion of Matsudaira, he met, and it was rumoured, had an affair with Ito Ikeda when she would have been 16 years old, and that they conceived a child out of wedlock. After Legendre and Ito's wedding had been conducted, traditional preparations were made for their future as a married couple. As marriage to foreigners was, in 1872, still banned, the wedding took place in 1873, when the ban was rescinded under the influence of three of the most influential people in the Meiji government, probably Okuma Shigenobu, Ito Hirobumi, and one other who, though mortified, hid their disappointment. Though Legendre's second-born son, the couple's first child and eldest son, who would later become known as the Kabuki actor Ichimura Uzaima on the 15th, was born at Legendre's Sasagaya residence on Tenjincho in the district of Hongo on the 5th of November 1874. Given Uzaimon's connection through his mother with Matsudaro Yoshinaga, he would have been a 16th generation descendant, the first of the Tokugawa shoguns, Tokugawa Ieyasu. In spite of his illustrious origins, the fate of a mixed race child in Japan at the time would not have been good. At the age of four, in 1878, he was put up for adoption. 
and was adopted by Ichimura Uzaimon the 14th, otherwise known as Bandor Kakitsu the 1st, who gave him the name of Ichimura Rokutaro. His life on stage had begun and he would be subject to an early life of rigorous training to prepare him for the kabuki stage. In 1878, Legendre Anito's first daughter Ai was born. She unfortunately died prematurely in late 1880, so Legendre Anito tried for a third child. By then 51 years old, Legendre was pleased with the third pregnancy and impending birth. Arrangements were made for Dr. Sator from the nearby Jutendor University Hospital to help out, and he hurried over to set up a sterilised environment. On the 23rd of August 1881, Aika was born, and though she wasn't delivered in the maternity room, her birth went smoothly. Just afterwards, looking at the baby, it was remarked that she was a spitting image of her younger sister. Legendre's principal secluded residence in Tokyo, called the Camellia Palace, Sibakikoten, was located at Sasugaya. It's a vast building measuring in total 36,000 square feet, and Japanese measurements a thousand times two mats. It was located where Sasugaya Elementary School now stands, in the neighbourhood of Koishikawa Botanical Gardens, Bumukyoku. There was a tea pavilion, which was managed by a man called Shokichi and his wife Oshichi. Oshichi's niece was chosen as the nurse during the birth of his island's younger sister Aiko, along with two other women employed as Aiko's wet nurses. A 26-year-old seamstress at the Legendre residence, Narukawa, was also employed in the privileged post of babysitter. The Fovis painter Kimura Shohachi, who was friends with the time and occasionally stayed there, it would seem that the Sekia family, Aiko, Toshiko and Kimiko, lived there until after the 1923 earthquake disaster, when in 1924 they moved temporarily to the business premises of Aiko's husband, Sekia Yunosuke, in Yoyogi. However, as the business failed, they then moved to San Oshita in Akasuka, and from there to Uzaiman's Ushibuseyama Villa at the coastal resort of Ushibuse, Numazu in Shizuoka Prefecture. In Shizue Kato's book, Facing Two Ways, The Story of My Life, she describes the property in the same area that belonged to the family of her husband, Baron Kiekichi Ishimoto, a Christian humanist. Baron Ishimoto's house, built in the old Kyoto Palace style, stood in the Koishikawa district. The big square wooden gate had heavy swinging doors with iron fittings and a roof covered with dark grey tiles. Soft grey gravel covered the drive beyond the gate and the tall ginkgo trees with their fan-shaped leaves stood on both sides like giant sentinels. In front of the entrance hall were camellia plants and dark brown Japanese maples. The house itself was divided into two wings, one Japanese and one foreign. Western rooms in the Louis Quatorze style or a chamber furnished with a North European stove. On the evening of the third day after her birth, as is the custom, a three-day horoscope was drawn up. Though Legendre's initial reaction had been muted, his sitting room, where a grand banquet was laid on with champagne, had been decorated with Japanese lanterns, the flags of various nations and many bouquets of flowers. The event became quite unruly, with a crowd of close acquaintances congratulating him boisterously in loud voices. Safely delivered, Aiko was signed into the Ikeda family register and at the time as the daughter and heir of the House of Legendre it was remarked that his daughter would be brought up like a princess and time and resources were spent making her childhood a blessing. However, over the next two winters her life was threatened when she succumbed to diphtheria and croup. Doctors Sato and Yasoshima, alternating their attendance from Jutendo University Hospital, successfully supervised her care and recovery at the family residence, though afterwards Aiko's health remained precarious, and as a consequence her parents were predictably pretty downhearted. It was unfortunate that Legendre neglected his relationship with his son, which left Aiko, their third child, as their only remaining child living at home with them. Interestingly, though it was remarked that both Aiko and Uzaimon had very different features, they both suffered from syndactyly, known as goshisho in Japanese, which is marked by overlapping or webbed fingers. The affliction badly affected Aiko's hands and feet, and she would occasionally suffer a loss of strength in both when her daughter Kimiko Noguchi would accompany her on outings when Aiko found it difficult to walk. According to Kimiko, her mother Aiko's health stabilised, and she seemed happy enough, and later on was particularly overjoyed that she basked in her brother's affection. Kimiko talked a lot about their atypical appearance. Aiko's features were noticeably westernised, 
but surprisingly, Uzaiman didn't really look that much like her. Uzaiman's niece Kimiko commented, Like grandmother, uncle was typically Japanese in comparison with mother, whose looks which, quite frankly, clearly reflected and were fashioned by grandfather's ancestry. The so-called theory of Uzaiman's mixed parentage has been verified from Iwanami's Biographical Dictionary of Westerners, Iwanami Seiyo Jinmeiji Ten, which describes the situation in detail. Rumours about Uzaiman's birth had always been denied by Tokyo's older residents. However, in the Japanese author Satomi Ton's definitive inquiry, The Legend of Uzaiman, Uzaiman Den Setsu, conclusive information was gathered about Uzaiman in conversations with his younger sister, Aiko, information which was also written and circulated by her, substantiating what would otherwise have remained conjecture. In Sir Tommy Ton's book, it says that Uzaiman and his younger sister Aiko were both seen together on a train in clandestine circumstances. Both Uzaiman and his younger sister, Aiko, were smartly dressed in Western clothes. Aiko stood out amongst the subdued Japanese clothing of the men, and though dressed in Western clothes, the impressively handsome Uzaiman looked obviously Japanese. It was said that Uzaiman brought to the stage pure clarity of speech. From his adoptive father's instruction, he was well trained in discretion, protecting his career and his reputation so that there were no supposed unusual circumstances surrounding him. In much the same way as Aiko, who was brought up amongst people of similar attitude. It is likely that Legendre would have been at the June 1879 performance at the Shintomiza Theatre when Prince Heinrich of Prussia attended, and most definitely on the occasion of the visit, on July the 16th, 1879, to the Shintomiza Theatre by the one-time President of the United States of America, Ulysses S. Grant. Uzaiman would have been five years old in 1879, and one wonders if he attended the July 1879 performance. If he did, though Legendre may have been pointed out to him, it was doubtful at such an early age that he would have known about his relationship with him. Then, in January 1881, at the age of seven, he made his first official debut on stage at the Shintomiza Theatre, during performances of Sambaso, Domyoji, Kurumabiki, Terukoya and Senbon Sakura, taking the name of Bando Takematsu. It was reported that though his hands were shaking, his voice didn't falter. It was during an appearance on stage while he was still named Takematsu that he was recognised as Ichimura Rokutaro by Ito and Legendre. Rokutaro, together with the other actors, remained unflustered by the situation. In 1890, Legendre left Japan to take up another advisory post in Korea, leaving his family behind. In March 1893, Uzaiman's adoptive father, Bandor Kakitsu I, died. According to Okamoto Kido, the kabuki playwright and author in his book Talks on Meiji Era Theatre Under the Lamp, Meiji Gekidan Rampu no Shitanite. The Ichimura's Art Theatre's entertainment at the time included Sadanji and Kakitsu's acting troops. They performed Kondo Juzo, also known as Yamabedaki Meguro no Shinfuji, and the Koto interrogation scene Akoya, the third act of Dan no Ura Kabuto Gunki. In the middle of the performance run, Takematsu's adoptive father and Onoi Kikuguro V's younger brother Kakitsu suddenly became ill and died. Unfortunately, after the performance had been suspended and the theatre closed, while discussions were taking place about what to do about continuing the performance run, the theatre world was hit by disaster when the theatre burnt down. Kikitsu had a large oval-shaped face and a soft tone of voice which also earned him the nickname of Hatopopo, Pigeons Kuring. He was called one of the greatest wagoto or soft-style actors of his day. He most certainly ranked alongside the great, the famous Dankikusa trilogy of famous actors, Ichikawa Danjuro the Ninth, Onoi Kikuguro V, and Ichikawa Sadanji the First. Uzaiman would later become just as famous, especially for the role of Kurariyosa, his forte. This was something for which it wasn't necessary for him to be grateful to his father for. At the Kotobukiza Theatre, Kakitsu's Kurariyosa, Sawamura Genosuke, the fourth's Otomi and Dengoro's Komori Yasu had been performed, roles of distinctive character with which they were particularly identified. 
Kikitsu carried himself naturally and tenderly in his performance as your Saburo, something which others were unable to achieve. His older brother Kikuguro also played the role of Kirari Yosa at the Kabukiza Theatre, though his performance fell short of that of his younger brother. In his last years, Kikitsu excelled in his soft Bogoto style of acting, and he also chose, to popular acclaim, to perform the roles of Kumagai in Kumagai Jinya, the final scene of Act 2 of Ichinotani for Tabagunki, Fukashichi from Mikasayama Goten, the fourth act of An Exemplary Tale of Womenly Virtue, in Mosiyama on the Teikin, and Ooka Echizen no Kami, also known as Ooka Tadasuke, all in the style of Dandro. With his sympathetic style of acting, he soon became a prominent figure. It was extremely unlucky that he passed away at the age of 47 from acute peritonitis. After the death of his adopted father, in July of that same year, at the age of 19, Bando Takimatsu, in a ceremony called Shuume, took the name of Ichimura Kakitsu VI at the Kabukiza Theatre at the performance of the play Katakiyuchi Suzure no Nishiki. When he was performing, he also visited Ito's residence, putting up a smoke screen about his mother's origins every time she met other young actors in his home. When Kakitsu, later Uzaiman, was at home with Aiko, he said that, though at first he was prepared to pretend not to recognise her, he realised from the situation that they really were older brother and younger sister. From 1897 onwards, the mother, her 24-year-old son and his 17-year-old sister parent and child, older brother and younger sister, began to meet on a regular basis. Around then, a waka, which Ito had penned about her son, was shared amongst them. A dagger in my hand, holding a dagger to commit suicide. Free of bitterness at the end of facing death, I think now only of my child with unbearable wonder. In my sorrow, as I think of death, it seems this child has future prospects and my spirit is transformed. Even if the usual means of farewell is to be by a drawn longsword, my dearest child, the child of my heart is magnificent. At the time of death when, child of my heart, we are torn apart, the unsheathed sword is put aside. A neighbour bestows great prospects on a high-ranking person's child whose mother country he is destined to serve. The child of a worthy person lately succeeding in his career, who for the sake of destiny is dedicated to his mother country. The Waka came to light in later years as a consequence of an extremely sad and final event in the life of Uzaiman's niece, Sekia Toshiko. On November the 7th, 1941, a Soviet spy, Richard Sorge, and a Japanese accomplice, Hotsumi Ozaki, were executed for espionage in Sugamo prison. Though her sister Kimiko always denied her sister's involvement in the Sorge affair, Toshiko, the one-time lead soprano at Scala Milan, who had also been under investigation and who it was rumoured was one of Sorge's mistresses, committed suicide on the 23rd of the same month. The whack was found in a box of her papers. Though she had left instructions for her papers to be burnt, as a consequence of her mother's last will and testament, they were preserved. She also left an ornate sword with mother of pearl inlays complete with tachi stand. Toshiko's suicide note, which was written on the back of a sheet of music which she had composed called Noibara, or Field of Thorns. Even if, at the age of 38, I, Sekia Toshiko, am scattered like fragrant cherry blossoms, I realise that I will not be lost forever. With sincerity I will keep Toshiko's honour safe for eternity. Year after year, for a million years, the world will know how. In this, I demonstrated the purity of my heart thoughtfully done to protect the dignity of the arts of Greater Japan. Sekia Toshiko, Suicide Note. Uzaiman and Aiko were upset by Ito's waka. It especially affected Uzaiman, who became very troubled by it. However, 
Once the meetings between parent and children and older brother and younger sister began, it really felt like a fresh start, with the older brother and younger sister becoming close friends, always chatting and getting along, talking about wanting to compose poems. In 1897, on a return trip to Japan from Korea, Uzaiman's father, Legendre, visited his family several times between October and December, and on one day when he arrived to join them for dinner, the increasingly refined Uzaiman patiently regarded his father. Nevertheless, on that day, they each openly referred to the other as parents and children, and older brother and younger sister. As he introduced himself, Legendre excitedly embraced his wife and children and chatted with them, especially about his son, who'd had a painful upbringing, for which he apologised. Afterwards, they chatted about Ito's very regrettable and extraordinary suffering, about which Legendre was admonished, and about preventing her suicide. They both agreed that no matter what was happening, they absolutely could not imagine the mother's hopeless suffering with which they consistently sympathised. And then Uzaiman chatted with his father about his career. His father, uneasy speaking in Japanese, conversed in French. The dialogue was transcribed into a document where significant things that were discussed were recorded, such as the origin and development of the Japanese play occurred accidentally out of an assortment of actors, ancient ordinary customs, in which there were less concern about the circumstances. In France it's about artists, about politicians, and the more esteemed wealthy people. In my humble opinion, I have no use of such expectations. Increasingly, endeavour and triumph are forgotten. Danjuro and Kikuguro are hoping for and thinking about those things which are most important. However, the presence of the divine brings a blessing of ability and beauty and with increasing skill and influence develops into an exceptional revival. Arts don't have a successful selling point. Just to have breathed in the silken thread is to have prolonged one's own destiny. Naturally excellent all his life, his art is effortless for a number of reasons. Certainly Japan's best is ultimately the most exalted. At the time Ito told her husband Legendre in gratitude that she was honoured and grateful for an excellent actor's actor who was dedicated and peerless and that his path was conferred on him by the practice of following a divine spirit. At a later time Legendre secretly said that it went without saying how honestly proud and supportive he felt about his island. Legendre returned to Korea where he died of a stroke on the 1st of September 1899 after he had collapsed after drinking champagne at a party to celebrate his birthday hosted by the Korean royal family. Unfortunately, as was reported in the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune in 1902, his Order of the Rising Sun, memoirs and political papers, and a sword given to him by Saigo Takamori, which he had left to his American son, were all destroyed when his son's house at Mount Kisco in New York State burnt down. Also lost was a painting called Witchcraft by the American illustrator Howard Pyle. Leaving Fukushima, both Ito and Aiko went to Korea to investigate the events of Legendre's death and to attend to and conclude the necessary arrangements to commit Legendre's mortal remains to the Korean soil. Ito's grief was intense. She commented that, in his refusal to focus on profiting from his activities, I am pleased that he unstintingly gave his whole life in service to other countries. Afterwards, they discovered details about their ancestry which they felt might improve their prospects. At a later meeting with the heir of Matsudaira Yoshinaga, probably Viscount Matsudaira Kataru, in the town of Okuma in Mutsu province, modern-day Fukushima, in formal language their mother Ito told her story, which was later written down verbatim. However honourable and significant his status was, once he left and abandoned me, I became increasingly insignificant. Even so, Though I had the honour and opportunity to cultivate closer relationships, I am sorry that Ito, the nobody, only has vague information about her parents. Both of them, master and mistress, in order to deal with their anxiety, together secretly boasted about their noble and historic lineage, and that their birth and social status is an example that is in harmony with and benefits the lord of this country. Now, after such a long time, my name is more influential, even though the wife of a nobleman from a foreign country, I was given an opportunity and was engaged as the prince's tutor. With a Japanese strength of mind, I loyally carried out their wishes, and in accordance with a woman's merits, faultlessly accomplished everything that has been mentioned. Pardon me, but all along our purpose and dedication has been invaluable. Mine to fulfil my obligations to my country, and my husband's to serving the prosperity of his heritage. Ito continued, 
Though I may be speaking out of turn, in life I am discreet and modest. My wishes are remarkably humble. Not at all noble enough to flatter any intellect, I am expected to lose gracefully and bearing gratitude. That I am much less worthy than the richest of the intellectual aristocracy is certainly an insincere assumption that I am sure the nobility appreciate. If my spirit is peaceful, it becomes harmonious. I naturally pass a time resting and enjoying myself in moderation, which, according to the doctor, ought to keep me healthy. My intentions with respect to loyalty and filial party aren't so different. I love the person who is my favourite. I must hold dear to what I say, and not write words for entertainment's sake which are untrue and disdainful in such a discreet situation. I speak frequently about the cause of the problem, a situation in which I am the exasperated wife of the person who was my sweetheart, friend and spouse. The little time that I spent with us was a gift before she was too soon taken to heaven. My thoughts are angry on behalf of I spirit to which I reached out. I will talk about this until I'm told to shut up. My story is often eventful and I have a sense of my life having been wasted. During his time away I pleaded with heaven for him, an especially invisible nobleman whose time spent away was particularly heartfelt. I reason with my intellect so as not to allow my feelings about that absent person to become real and completely unbearable. I kept a little makeup and an old poem that I brought along which I kept in my room. Because of the conceivable likelihood of the threat to Legendre's family's dignity, I then still reached out to embrace I in a significantly Christian-like way. Perhaps, it would seem, a lesson learnt from Legendre. We should have continued in this spirit. That was until now. With this final setback, this family have now enforced their decision, unhappy about how long this important matter has persisted unchallenged. Iko remarked openly that she was at the time influenced by the extent of her mother's qualities rather than her father's. After marrying Sekia Yuenosuke from Mutsu's Nihon Matsu clan, Aiko had no choice but to stay in Okuma in Fukushima. With a mother's strength of will she commented that, I was fortunate in that had I not been totally influenced by my mother and pregnant with Rinko, probably Toshiko, in different circumstances I may have contemplated suicide. Two pivotal issues in Uzaiman's life occurred in 1903 when he was 29 years old. The death of Ichikawa Danjiro the Ninth, and the ceremony, or Shuyumit, of taking the name Ichimura Uzaiman the Fifteenth. In the lead up to the first, a huge row blew up about the second. Though there is no recording in Kabuki Nempyo and Kokuritsu Gekijo Jo in Shiryoshu of the staging of Kumagai Jinya at the Kadazai in 1903, that this had been scheduled is evidenced in this triptych by Hosei Baidel of a performance of Kumagai Jinya which as indicated in the original panel should have taken place at the Kadaza Theatre in Osaka in August 1903. The triptych had been painted and printed but not marked with Baido's seal which should have appeared in the left hand panel. Performance in the picture should have taken place in the four months between March, after Onoe Izaburo V took the name Onoe Baiko VI, and October 1903, before Ichimura Kakitsu VI took the name Ichimura Uzaman XV. If it had been due to take place in August 1903 at the Kadaza Theatre, it is highly likely to have been cancelled as a consequence of the huge row that blew up over Kakitsu's Shumi or name change. The row seems to have stemmed from an earlier speech Kakitsu had made at his stage debut in the execution ground at Suzugamori when he alternated the roles of Shirai Gonpachi and Banzu in Chobe, when in an on-stage cord or ceremonial announcement he spoke about his thoughts concerning his forthcoming Shuyume, which may have included some remarks about his illustrious origins. Here are the voices of Ichimura Uzaiman XV and Matsumoto Koshiro VII in a recording of the play The Execution Grounds at Suzugamori, originally recorded in January 1926, it was re-released as recording number 351888 in September 1931. 
Gonpach was played by the Zaimon and Chore Bear by Koshiro. <laughs> Up until that point, Shikan, Vaiko, Yaozo and Kakitsu had been inseparable. The incredibly conceited Shikan then took huge offence and became the lead protagonist in a coordinated campaign against Kakitsu's Shume and tried to enlist the help of Danjuro the Ninth, who, after he was reprimand reprimanded by Komazo the Eighth, began inciting Kakitsu. Baiko and Kakitsu were definitely in Osaka, where they were summoned to see Shikan to discuss the issue. Afterwards, Baiko joined up with a troop managed by Yaozo and went on regional tour to Hokkaido. On the 8th of August 1903, Shikan, Matsuki, Kakitsu and others were due to appear on stage in performances at Osaka's Kadoza Theatre. Kakitsu did play at the Kadoza in the role of Yo Saburo, the drama Yo Nasaka Kina no Yokogishi, when the role of Otomi was played by Nakamura Shikan V. However, Shikan, who because of his conceitedness was nicknamed the Emperor, vacillated about whether or not he would continue to appear and then left the theatre along with his troupe. Isolated over the matter, he gave up his actor's permit, giving as his reason cessation of business. Resigned to the situation, he left Osaka, and though he had become exceedingly angry, his surprise departure was seen as malign revenge over the issue. Kikitsu, who was about eight years younger, ranted at those of lower rank and thought that he ought to have been on stage simply because it would have been strange for him not to have been. Furious at Shikan's troop, Kakitsu simply returned to Tokyo while Shikan, who had lost, held local practice events at his home. Kakitsu's dignity remained intact and he responded by telling Shikan, You brother, seppuku, seppuku. In the end, Shikan ended up completely isolated and indignant. Eventually, due to about of ill health, Shikan's anger about what Kakitsu had said faded. Four years before the events of 1903, in 1899, Two of the most prestigious actors in Miyajiro Kabuki, Ichikawa Danjuro IX and Onoe Kikuguro V, had been filmed by Shibata Tsunekichi, performing Momijigari, Contemplating Maples, on the open air stage at the Byron Tea House at the rear of the Kabukiza Theatre. It is the oldest Japanese film in existence. At the time, Danjuro remarked, It is terribly strange to be able to see my own dance.
Then, in September 1903, Danjiro died. Okamoto Kido, in his book Talks on Meiji Era Theatre Under the Lamp, Meiji Gekidan Rampo no Shitanite, describes the events surrounding his death. Danjiro was able to safely play in the May performance run. The kabuki plays were first Lady Kasuga, Kasuga no Tsubune, then the middle act The Lost Dress Coat, Tsuo Otoshi, and the second Komagata Osen. Danjiro only appeared in the first as he played two roles, Kasuga no Tsubune and Tokugawa Iyasu, for which there were costume changes. He was in the same play in June Meiji 24, 1891, at the same theatre when he first performed O Chikoji's work. For Danjiro, this was the second time. His emaciated figure was strikingly noticeable. It did perhaps cause some foreboding that he would not be embracing the future changes of the stage. Kikuguro died. Danjiro had been seen on the stage for a long time. It was inevitable that the future world of Tokyo drama would be transformed. There was a lot more furtive knitting of eyebrows amongst theatre goers. As had happened previously, before he could work anymore, he disappeared, ending his professional involvement. He spent some time that summer and during a pleasant autumn on holiday at his villa in Chigasaki, taking a break from midsummer and midwinter plays, something he had been doing for years. In 1897-1898, Danjiro built a villa which was called Koshoan at Koda in Chigasaki, which was then a village. It is now a children's playground in Hiwa Cho Koban on Teppo Michi, where a monument has been built and which is now referred to as Danjiro Yama. At the time, Ichimura Uzaiman the 15th was still called Ichimura Kakitsu the 6th. That year, in the autumn performance run, he would be taking the name of Ichimura Uzaiman the 15th. The announcement of this was made at the Matsuasa restaurant in Omori district, to which every newspaper critic had been invited, and to which, as the newspaper Tokyo Nichinichi Shimbun's drama critic and journalist, I had also been invited. It seemed like an autumn that morning. It was Sunday the 13th of September and a gentle rain was falling. I went to the restaurant and arrived at the appointed time, 5pm in the afternoon. This is disciple of the aforementioned Ichimura, Bando Ayami, who was from the Kanto region, was waiting on them and serving food. Including me, almost all the gentlemen from each of the newspaper companies were in attendance, though his master Kikitsu wasn't there. He was at Chigasaki, where things were not good, and to where that morning expressions of sympathy had been sent. Ayame kept saying how sorry he was. Danjiro's condition had worsened, they said, a message that was also passed to the press. The public already knew. Naturally, we already knew. In light of the news, we all knew that it was uncertain whether this time, given the circumstances, he would be able to recover again. His heart was under tremendous strain, though only that day he'd been chatting a lot with Ayame. Everyone was mingling and during pauses exchanging their sympathies, talking about their sadness that Horikoshi, Danjiro's birth name, was finally moving beyond hope. Our foreboding had become reality. We were also told that Kasuga no Tsubone had been the final stage event. Along with the others there, I posted my report to my company by telephone with lowered voice that Danjiro's critical illness was final. It was very calm. The day was a little bit chilly and was quickly made overcast by the rain. That afternoon, about 6pm, on Omori District's beach, it had become really dark. Kakitsu arrived wearing a frock coat and hurried upstairs. His greeting was very polite. He said thank you very much, and that he had arrived after having determinedly galloped from Chigasaki. Speaking quickly, he said that this afternoon Danjiro had finally died. He spoke at length and in great detail about the circumstances of his death. Though we had been resigned to this happening, now that we knew the news with certainty, we all felt suddenly very gloomy. Danjiro had been entrusted with and expected to make the Kōjō ceremonial announcement at Kikitsu's name change. Now that he had gone, Kikitsu, who was a star performer, seemed somewhat dejected. He was like this for a while after Danjiro's death, made half-hearted attempts to entrust this responsibility to others. He would sooner have entrusted himself as the person to make the cordial ceremonial announcement, and it was decided by those to whom he had said this that it would be best if they were to provide instruction. This was done for no other reason than because of what he had said to others. Anyway, because this was being done for that reason, he made a speech saying he had been explicitly invited to hold this unique honour and to please pardon my manners. Though it was raining incessantly, Kikitsu retraced his steps to Chigasaki in the downpour. 
Afterwards, in his Zashiki mat room, he became increasingly depressed. Arrangements had to be made for the dead Danjiro. The people from the newspaper companies, which published articles every day of the year, also left quickly after he had gone. When he returned, straight away on the Monday we did the inevitable and suspended publication. Ayame seemed so pitiful and had switched off until later on in the evening. When it was getting late, he started to talk again and speculate about the deceased. The autumn rain was still pouring down and the lonely sound of the darkened sea could be heard. That evening was a really desolate one. Danjiro was born in Tenpo 9, 1838. I heard that he was 66 years old when he died. His funeral took place one week later and was arranged by Aoyama Cemetery. On that day it also poured down with rain. Okamoto Kido continues. The inauspicious death of Gekise, Danjiro's nickname, caused a great stir and some confusion and many emotional debates amongst his peers as to who would conduct the court or in his place. Uzaiman kept his own counsel whilst the debates churned around him. On the opening day performance in October 1903, Danjiro IX's death portrait was placed on stage alongside that of Uzaiman's uncle, his adoptive father's older brother, Onoi Kikuguro V, formerly Ichimura Uzaiman XIII, who had passed away six months earlier. This is an actress portrait by Toyohara Kunichika of Onoi Kikuguro V as Nikki Danjo in the play Uruomote Sendai Hagi from the performance at the Ichimuraza Theatre in the ninth month of Meiji 1, 1868, when in a celebratory ceremony called Shuume, his name was changed from Ichimura Kakitsu IV to the prestigious name of Onoe Kikuguro V. The picture is entitled in the left panel to the actor Onoe Kikuguro. In the right panel, a gift from his fans. The mon or crest behind the figure of Kikuguro V is his line of actors in formal crest of four interlinked hoops, Kaimonwa Yotsua. At the Dankiku Memorial Program, which was held at the Kabukiza Theatre in October 1903 to commemorate the memory of Danjuro and Kikuguro, the Kojo was very emotional and summed up their popularity and success throughout their lives. Uzaiman's succession to his name at the Kabukiza Theatre at the time was unparalleled happening as it did in oddly complicated circumstances and in the afterglow of the careers of Dan Juro and Kikuguro. He subsequently became a hugely successful and popular actor and though in his youth he was considered too awkward to be a kabuki actor, he later developed into one of the best tachiyaku male role specialists of the first half of the 20th century. According to the Longstreet's book Yoshiwara, The Pleasure Quarters of Old Tokyo, Uzaiman also had a reputation as a womanizer and having been rejected by one famous geisha, married another called Okoi of the Omuja Geisha House in Shimbashi, who was also one of his fans. The marriage was arranged by his fans and admirers through a matchmaker, with the blessing of her former husband, a wealthy stockbroker by the name of Heizo Yajima. The wedding was a gala occasion, and Okoi went to live with Azaiman's adopted parents. Okoi's mother-in-law allegedly behaved very badly to her daughter-in-law, reducing her to servitude while Azaiman having secured a famous geisha for a wife, set off on a lavish philandering spree accruing substantial debts which had to be paid off by Okoi. After two years, Okoi asked for and was granted a divorce. She borrowed 1,000 yen and set up her own tea house, later becoming the lover of Prime Minister Taro Katsura. The Azuma Ryu Nihon Buyo School of Dance Revival, of which Azaiman was the Shodai Soki, head and founder, decided, in collaboration with the actor Ichikawa Komazo VIII, later Matsumoto Koshiro VII, and the music master Kiyomoto Enju V, to revive Kasane in 1906 at the Shintomiza Theatre. The first great revival at the Kabukiza Theatre was performed in December 1920 with the illustrious Kabuki Goriden Kombi Golden Combination of Ichimura Uzaiman the 15th and Onoi Baiko the 6th in the roles of Yoimon and Kasane. Thanks to this revival, the dance drama Iro Moyo Chotto Karimame became a great item in the current kabuki repertoire and it is performed regularly by the best kabuki actors.
At the peak of their popularity, Uzaman and Baikor performed in Momijigali, contemplating maples, at the Shintomiza Theatre in February 1922. After the performance, they created this oshiguma, or face pressing of makeup on silk, to celebrate the performance. It was subsequently sent to Kyoto to be mounted on this kakimono, or vertical scroll, by the potter artisan Kiyomizu Rokube V. It is probably the reason why it survived the devastation of the great earthquake disaster of 1923. Ichimura Takematsu IV played Yamagami, Ichimura Uzaiman XV played Tada no Kodimuch, and Anoi Baiko VI played Princess Sarashino. Then, the Kabukisa Theatre's repertoire having undergone a thorough review, in April 1907, Kanji Incho, a subscription list, was staged with Komazo playing the role of Benkei. Togashi was, of course, played by Uzaiman. Komazo, later Matsumoto Koshiro VII, played the role of Benkei for the first time in June 1906 at the Kabukiza Theatre, a role he played at least 1,600 times during his career. He and Uzaimon would play opposite each other in Kanjin Cho many, many times. A surviving film clip of a performance of Kanjin Cho of the subscription list at the Minamiza Theatre in Kyoto in 1930 shows the two playing opposite each other in their favourite roles, with Ichimura Uzaimon XV playing Togashi, the commander of the barrier guard, and Matsumoto Koshiro VII as Yoshitsune's ever faithful retainer, the Yamabushi warrior monk Benke. Uzaiman remained devoted to his mother Ito, and in 1913, when she lay dying at the Camellia Palace, Uzaiman visited her every night. When he left her, he called her his Okka-san, a Meiji period term for mum. His mother tenderly called her son Bochan. Apparently, Uzaiman forgot to make arrangements in case there was an emergency, and wasn't there when his mother passed away, purportedly as a result of an aneurysm. In the event, a female nurse was close by at the time, keeping watch. On the 14th of April 1928, Uzaiman and his wife Oharu, with whom he had finally settled into married life, set sail on the NYK Tayomaru, bound for the United States en route to Europe. It had originally been intended for Uzaiman to be accompanied by Baikor, but while Baikor was playing a role in Ibarakia in the New Year production at the Teigeki Imperial Theatre in 1928, he collapsed on stage after the middle of the performance. Because of this, Uzaiman's wife, or Haru, went instead, and they travelled as a married couple. While on tour, they visited Hollywood, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, New York in the United States of America, and London and Paris in Europe. Whilst in London, Uzaiman had a tuxedo tailor-made for him, and while in Paris at the Louvre and watching the crowds who were looking at the Venus de Milo, he remarked, it seems to be the business when a woman's hands are cut off. While in Hollywood, they met the silent screen actors Charles Murray, Lon Chaney and the Japanese actor Sojin Kamiyama, who was working in Hollywood at the time.
Uzaiman reputedly had naturally impressive Japanese Edo manners and a wonderful and charismatic personality. And when asked what he could do on stage, he replied, I'm happy not doing anything. People are going to look at me anyway. He was an open-hearted, genuine Japanese man who more than embraced Edo style sophistication. Sir Tommy Ton alludes to the boundless charm of this Ichimura style on stage and that a pronounced aura drifted around the figure of Izaiman. One day, when the Hanamichi lights had gone off, Izaiman remarked to his Onagata partner that he would be good even without the lights and to an astounded and somewhat anxious stage technician that just by getting on with it, he would brighten things up. Even without the lights on the Hanamichi, Izaiman was able to create an atmosphere. Critics remarked that he doesn't have to have Hanamichi lighting when his white face appears in the pitch darkness. Uzaiman was admired by many, and even the preeminent Ichikawa Dandro the Ninth exhibited a grudging admiration for him. He had a great physical appearance, a strong presence on stage, and an amazing voice. He was one of the preeminent Nimaime, handsome, refined young male lover role specialist, and Sabakiyaku, villain defeating male role specialist of the day. A dark complexion, slim yet powerful, with courage and a mature self confidence, that man's inner light rose to the surface. Uzaiman was convincingly emotionally engaging. Uzaiman's other stunning success was the white makeup Shironuri. It was commented that his Shironuri for the character of Naojiro was beautiful. He played about 60 roles throughout his life, and was absolutely beautiful and his voice captivating. A restless stirring voice like that once heard is never forgotten. A clearly resonating voice, pausing, exciting. A voice that was tinged with sorrow. An open and natural voice. A gentle voice, a voice with good command. He kept on playing young lover roles even in his later years, though he never played elderly male characters. He was a fan of Charlie Chaplin, and after having seen Chaplin's film City Lights in America, helped Kimura Kinka, a popular playwright of the day, with his kabuki adaptation of the film called Komori no Yasusan, Batman Yasu. Onoi Baiko VI was born Jitto Enosuke in Fushimi-cho, Nagoya, Owari province, and it is said that Onoi Chojiro, Onoi Kikuguro III's son, was his father. However, it is rumoured that he was the illegitimate son of Onoi Kikuguro V, and a Nagoya geisha from a reputable Shinano family, and therefore half-brother to Onoi Kikuguro VI. In 1877, he was introduced to Kabuki in a small theatre, Shimoriza in Nagoya and in 1882 he started training to be an Onnagata and was adopted by Anoi Kikuguro V. In 1891 he celebrated his first Shuyume at the Shintomiza Theatre and took the name of Anoi Izaburo V. And in March 1903 at a great Shuyume at the Kabukiza Theatre he took the name of Anoi Baiko VI. Uzaiman's duo with Anoi Baiko VI was one of the most famous Goruden combi golden combination of Onnagata and Tachiyaku in Kabuki history. The most famous contemporary golden combi is the duo Bando Tamasaburo and Katao Kanizaimon, affectionately known as Takatama. Uzaiman and Baikor's affectionate joie de vivre was, it seems, irresistible. In November 1934, Anoi Baikor VI was to have celebrated his Shuyume. He then intended to announce his retirement with a performance at the Kabukiza Theatre in January 1935, which would have been a memorial celebration on the 33rd anniversary of Anoi Kikuguro V's death. However, he suffered a stroke, collapsed, and was taken to his dressing room, and on the 8th of November 1934 he passed away. He was buried in Zoshigaya Cemetery in Minami Kebukuro, Toshima, Tokyo. For his Shinye or death portrait, Uzaiman inscribed the following poem. Existence blurred, in a wooden brazier, it is, alas, raining tears. Signed, Kakuo, Uzaiman's poetry name. Afterwards, Uzaiman successfully continued to perform in duo with Katok and Uzaiman at 12th. On the 15th of February 1945, with a favourable outcome for Japan in the Second World War increasingly uncertain, and the air raids on Tokyo a daily occurrence, it was decided that Uzaiman should be evacuated to Yudanaka Onsen Hot Springs Resort in Nagano Prefecture after an air raid had forced the premature closure of the play Moritsune Jinya at the Shimbashi and Bujo Theatre. He died there on the 6th of May, Shawa 20, 1945, at Yorozuya Onsen Shiraisa Annex. In the room is a hanging scroll which Uzaiman drew while staying there. Rumour has it 
that Uzaiman was accompanied not by his wife Oharu, but by a Yanagabashi geisha called Yoroshi, something which Uzaiman's niece Kimiko Noguchi later denied. The day before he died, Endo Ishun, also known as Endo Tamiharu, the then director of the Kabukiza Theatre and Shochiku official, visited him to ask if he would be able to return to Tokyo to perform at the theatre the following month of June. His funeral was marked as a day of national mourning, and the police were drafted in to control the crowds. He is interred in Zoshigaya Cemetery in Minami Ekibukuro, Toshima, Tokyo, next to Onoi Baikuo VI, his much-loved Onagata female role specialist stage partner. When, Four months later, on the 28th of August 1945, a worried Phobian Bowers, accompanying the head of the US Army of Occupation, General Douglas MacArthur, landed at Atsugi Air Base. The first question he asked of a waiting Japanese journalist was, is Ichimura Zaiman still alive? Except for that of their first-born daughter, Ai, the Legendre family graves are located in Surumi Sojiji in Yokohama, adjacent to Surumi University. Uzaiman's daughter, Fujima Harue, became the second Soke, or head of the Azuma Ryu Nihon Bureau School of Dance, and became Azuma Tokuho IV, the leader of Azumaza Kabuki Troupe. This photograph, taken on the 22nd of February 1954, shows Mrs. Douglas MacArthur, her son Arthur, and members of the Azumaza Kabuki Troupe at the Century Theatre in New York during a month long run organised by Sol Hurok that began on the 18th of February. Costumes were by Takashi Maya. The Japanese actors in the picture from left to right are Fujima Masaya II, Onoe Kikunojo I, and troop leader Azuma Tokuho IV, daughter of Ichimura Ozaiman XV of the Azuma Ryu Nihon Byo School of Dance. Azuma Tokuho IV and her husband Nakamura Tomijuro IV had a son, Nakamura Tomijuro V. Nakamura Tomijuro the fifth and his wife, the actress Mase Hashitsume, had a daughter, Azuma Tokia, later Azuma Tokuho, sixth Iemoto and third Soke of Azuma Ryu. She in turn married Nakamura Kanjaku V. Their son is Nakamura Kazutaro, the kabuki actor and Azuma Tokuyo, the seventh Iemoto or leader of today's Azuma Ryu. The legend continues. <laughs> Oh, God. 